What's up guys? So I decided to do a Q&A where I answer some questions about my life and spirituality and I hope you find these answers and these even these questions interesting. Maybe it'll help you out on your path. Maybe it's some questions that people have asked you or what you've thought of personally in your own life. So I'm going to let you guys know some things about me and how open I am with family and friends, for example, about my spiritual practices. So I'm gonna answer these questions and I hope it's an inspiration and helps some of you out that are kind of dealing with some of these issues that I've dealt with in life. Anyway, guys, check out these questions and these answers. And again, I hope you find it interesting. Here we go. So we're going to start with a pretty boring question, but it plays a role in the other questions. So I am, as of April 2020, 37 years old. So I started identifying myself as pagan when I was 26 years old, and that was in 2009. Um, so, with that said, the majority of my adulthood in my religious and spiritual life has been in some form of paganism. Before, when I turned 18 and 26, I didn't really have a home religiously. I was Christian, quote-unquote, but I was at the point where I wasn't really going to church anymore. I was a uh, Christian, if someone asked, but didn't really fit into that really philosophically, religiously, or spiritually. So that's why I always like to claim paganism as the religion of my adulthood since from 26 to 37, so almost 11 years now. So I've mentioned this before, how I discovered paganism. Well, the first time I've heard of any kind of pagan was around 2002. Um, I think that's when the second Godsmack album came out. Awake, I do believe what that album is called. Um, and I read an interview with the lead singer of Godsmack. And his name is Sully, if you don't know. And at the time, he was a practicing Wiccan. And I wasn't 100% sure what that was. But jumping back actually a little before then, I went to high school with a friend who had a pinnacle ring. And I asked him a little bit about what did that mean and what that was. And he told me he was Wiccan. And he told me a little bit about what it meant. And instead of judging the guy, believe it or not, I was actually curious. And little, and I asked him things about it. And little by little, I've had people in my life um, come out to me that they were either witches or pagan in one way, form or another. And um, 2009 was a big year because I dated someone who came out to me that she was a witch. And being with her for a few months, um, I started learning a little bit more of what that meant, even though what her definition and what I see as a, the definition dif very differently. She was more of the Christian witch and um, in the in Christian pagan mix kind of thing and so our views skew and different differ now but that was still an introduction to paganism to me all of those years ago so i like how paganism is open that you're able to worship a god that you feel called to or you feel that um is calling to you um and you don't have to approach the god with fear or worry i also like how there are also goddesses and that there's more than one god that there is no judgment towards people for the most part and um that we can approach the god and live our lives without fear of being punished for being born a lot of things you know a lot of places and religions like to say that um, we have to change 
or align with what we're told or we're going to end up um, in a bad spot in the end, we'll just say. That we were born to go in, into, it was almost like a fate in a way from the outside that some religions that you're fated because you're born and since the God knows where you're going to be in life, this is your role. In paganism, you can just be who you are and worship who you want without the worries of certain things. And that's what I like about it. It's open and friendly and for the most part, non-judgmental. So there can be some racism found in some pagan beliefs and um, nationalism. That's probably my dislike of uh, not, not paganism or polytheism, but a certain sex of it that get on my nerves, that it becomes a bad taste in your mouth, that they say you cannot practice this because you're not that. You will find that sadly in paganism as well. I know that other religions uh, have issues like that and I guess we're human and we always like to think we have the brass ring, that we have the answers and this is our club and you can or not enter, you cannot come in unless you are this. And that's probably my least favorite part. Um, but luckily with paganism, now the good news is that in polytheism is that you don't have to join groups. You don't have to worry about what people say. Just worry about yourself and honor the gods and live your life. And as long as you're connecting, like I preach on all these videos, as long as you're connecting with the gods and you have a relationship with them, who cares what people say? And it goes to show that we don't know every, any, everything. People don't know everything. And that's just proof of that even more every day. So what I touched on is that I guess you would say I converted to paganism and polytheism from Christianity. I won't tell what branch of Christianity it was, but it was a conversion. And I remember it was a fight with myself. When I started reading uh, uh, pagan books, um, I remember thinking it was such a brainwashing and growing up being told that there's only one God and Jesus is God and all this stuff that when I was confronted with the thought of being more, more than one God, it was literally like my brain and hardwiring was like fighting with itself. Like what, 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 what? <laughs> Overload. It was one of those kind of things. And then I finally kind of, it feels like a breaking out of your shell whenever you convert, not just into paganism or polytheism, but for any religion. I'm sure people have similar experiences, people that were this going, that converted to Christianity. I mean, it's a, um, you kind of are in this box. And when you learn something new that challenges what you know to be the truth at the time, it's kind of like your brain like overloads. And it really felt like that. It was like a fight. Like this can't be true. This can't be true. <laughs> like Star Wars, I feel like when Luke found out that Vader was his father, um, but yeah, it was kind of that in a way, and um, I just found truth in what I was reading, and that's why it was such a fight in my brain. It was like, I was told this, but this is true as well, and it was it was a fight for a while, but eventually um, I was able to break out of that shell and find my own spiritual place, and I can tell you right now that I'm happier now than I was when I was a Christian, when I was worrying about hell and sin and all that stuff. I was literally in tears back then and to be able to worship to be able to worship the gods and not worry about stuff like that there you go there's another plus about being into paganism and polytheism as well so answering two questions with one so i identify myself as a hellenic polytheist um so i'm more of a polythe polytheist is how i see myself now I don't really put myself into the pagan um, label or box because a lot of people associate paganism with nature and worshiping nature and all that, all the stereotypes that go with it. I see myself more as a Hellenic polytheist, meaning that if the way Hinduism has expanded and evolved over the times, I see myself as if um, the Greek 
gods and the worship of the gods in the ancient temples were not stopped and it continued to evolve just like Hinduism and it's kind of polytheistic in the way that Hindus so I see myself as pagan as much as a Hindu for example would see themselves as pagan so I'm a Hellenic polytheist I use the term pagan because uh, some people will slap that on that will slap that label onto Hellenic polytheism, but do I see myself as pagan? Uh, I guess, but it's more of a Hellenic or polytheistic spirituality. And for those that don't know what Hellenic polytheism is that are that's watching this video, it is the worship of the Greek gods that you know, like Zeus, Hera, and so on. So that's Hellenic polytheism in a nutshell, and that's how I view my spirituality. The biggest challenge of living in a predominantly Christian um, society is that if you're not Christian, then you're worshiping the devil. So I'm sure everybody gets that. And also, if it's not that when they hear that it is Hellenism that you're into, that you practice the worship of Zeus, they might laugh because those are myths that we learned about in elementary school. What are you doing? Don't you know that Zeus it doesn't exist? But... Um, he does, my friends, and just because it's a thing that's been um, told that is false for so many centuries that people have come to believe that. Um, and it's just as valid as anything else. When it comes to personal confrontation, that's never happened. I've never had a personal confrontation where someone wanted to fight me for it or something. But... Um, yeah, so the most challenging thing about being something other than Christian is to prove that you're either not crazy or that you're not worshiping the devil, as I just say, worshiping the devil by default, just because you're not worshiping their God. I have minor issues with family and friends most of the time they were accepting because they loved me so they were just mainly fine i wasn't making sure i wasn't going to hell when i explained uh my beliefs and that i don't worship the devil uh some of them came around some of them didn't care but i have had some family members that i've met some long distance relatives that they're like oh hey haven't seen you in a while and all this stuff and then they get on my facebook page and they'll uh see something and then I come back and I see him again and um they're like hey like I've had people invite me to barbecues and then they see my um they'll see something I might write or find out what I believe and then they unfriend me <laughs> they unfriend me because um of my spirituality it's funny it doesn't offend me it's just funny that one minute i'm invited like hey you should come over and have dinner with us sometime to the next minute uh unfriend me when they're the ones that sent the friend request in the first place so that tells you where people are in life and um same thing with friends i've had well people I went to high school with i wouldn't really say friends i got friends from high school that they know what i am and they're cool with it it's awesome but then i have people that Remember me from high school, they add me, they unfriend me like family, and uh, and then it's the funny thing, is, uh, the funniest thing of all is that I had someone the other day send me a friend request that unfriended me for my beliefs, and I was like, I'm not playing this game anymore. I mean, y'all have people that have flip-flop, but that's alright. I got friends as an adult that are cool with who I am, and that's the ones that matter to me. Um, if something as trivial as what I personally believe bugs you and you either don't want to speak to me or you unfriend me on Facebook, even though you're the one that sent the friend request in the first place, that's fine with me. I just won't add you on again. Anyway, and there you go, guys. Not too bad.